It's 6 o'clock. At this time, I'll call the regular meeting for Perry City Council, Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018, to order, please. We have a quorum. Item 3 is the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. If you're able, please rise. I'd like to call the Councilman and Reverend Robert Jones for the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to live in the city of Kansas. And we ask now to fill this place to our hearts and fill our spirit. We might lead and guide and direct this city in a way that's best glorified in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to call the Council for Randall Walker to lead and pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Item 4 for recognitions and presentations. Item 4A is a presentation. We're happy to have Mr. Jim Elliott with us tonight. Mr. Elliott? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Or you welcome to come up front of you. Uh, uh, Council, thank you for um, affording me the opportunity to uh, present a resolution, if I could. I would like, like to read it. Uh, resolution commanded David Walker. Whereas David G. Walker, a graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, and a partner of the Perry firm of Walker, Hubbard, and Wayne Moore, began providing legal service to his hometown in 1975 and was appointed as a city attorney in 1987. Whereas David has served as Hawkinsville City Attorney since 2008 and has been 20 years as City Attorney for Union Delaware. Whereas David has been a faithful attendee at the annual City Attorney Section meeting at Georgia Municipal Association Convention for many years. And whereas David, David has provided sound legal guidance, wisdom, common sense, and a calm demeanor to his municipal clients throughout his career. And whereas David's honest and faithful public service has benefited his municipal clients and their citizens. Whereas it is a desire of the section to acknowledge David's tenure as a city attorney to communities in the Middle Georgia area and his long participation as a member of the section. Now, therefore, be resolved that the city attorney section of the Georgia Municipal Association honors David Walker and expresses its appreciation for his many, many valuable contributions to Georgia cities and his many years of service in the field of Georgia Municipal Law. So resolved this 24th day of June 2018 in Savannah, Georgia, signed by Lenny Barton as president of the city attorney. Mr. Walker, would you like to say anything? I would. Yes, sir. I'm going to raise that just very much.
came to 42 January City Council meetings in a row and I was in the hospital this past January and so it stopped my street. But I would like to uh, introduce a few people if it's all right with you. Uh, I'm glad to have my 98 year old mother. <laughs> sister Linda. Uh, she's been a blessing to us. Uh, she's my favorite sister. I'll tell you that far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when I got leukemia, when they determined I had to have a uh, stem cell transplant, I had to have a donor. And all my siblings were more than willing to be my donor. And that, you know, I appreciate that very much. But Linda was more vocal about wanting to be my donor, and she ended up being my donor, and uh, she's my hero. Mm -hmm. I would also like to recognize uh, my law partners that are here. On the back row is Mike Gray. Uh, over to the behind Jim is the uh, is Josh Waters. Um, in front of Jim is Brooke Newby, and uh, next to her is Skeet Hulbert, and next to him is John Hulbert. And at the end of that row is, is Larry, and uh, they, they have been wonderful to me uh, throughout this my sickness, and I can't say enough good things about them. They're family to me, and I love each one of them. Uh, I, after I introduced Linda, I meant to talk about Larry. Larry is uh, in 19. Larry was in the legislature in 1976. He went to when he went to Atlanta for the legislature in January. The mayor at the time, James McKinley, uh, told Larry he wanted me to be the uh, acting city attorney while he was gone. And I didn't know much about it. And Larry was my mentor and my encourager and my sounding board. And he remains that to this day. And I appreciate him so much. Uh, Charles and Linda and I are, have always been close. I think we're closer today than we've ever been. And make this the stage we are in in life, but in, the, in our lives. But I thank them so much for their support and what they have meant to me. Uh, I also want to thank the uh, citizens of the city of Perry who make this such a great town to live in. And I again want to tell the council that we are privileged to uh, serve as a city of attorneys. We're proud to say we do that and we thank you so much for your support for many years. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say, and I skipped over it, and Thank goodness I didn't sit down without saying it. But Jim Elliott, there's no finer city attorney in, in the country than he is. Uh, he and I have been picking each other's brains for many years, and frankly, most of the picking has been by me. Uh, Jim has helped me so many times, and I'm proud to say over and above that that he's my good friend, and thank you, Jim, so much for making this presentation. Thank each of you for coming and uh, good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I really like to make a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the most important person here <clears throat> is my beautiful wife, Deborah. <laughs> when he gave me double when I don't know what he gave me gave it to me but anyway I 
Fine, I called up for well, and, and, uh, <laughs> privilege to have her as my wife. If, I, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here tonight. I uh, also have one of our staff back there in the back, I believe, and uh, two of them. Uh, we have a great uh, staff, and they have uh, certainly been a blessing in my life also. Uh, one other thing that I, I'll end with, um, when you get a stem cell transplant, the donor's stem cells uh, go into your body and they attack your, your stem cells and, and they kill them all. So uh, Linda was my donor and now I have 100% female stem cells. <laughs> <laughs> so if I act kind of strange, okay, <laughs> that's, that's the way. <laughs> traffic control device lights. Prior to this time, we had been contracting with the vendor, and every time they come out to replace some lights, it costs $1,500. Well, the lights only cost 477 so the last three times we have done this, the city has saved $1,023. The city has a program uh, available to any employee if they make, take the initiative and make a suggestion that saves the city money not only once or twice, but ongoing, that we reward them. Because of his initiative and his research and request and the savings that the city has already received and will continue to receive, it is my privilege to, admit, to award Mr. Christopher West a check for $500. citizens with input. Are there any citizens present who wish to address council on any issue at this time? Yes ma'am, your name and address? Yeah, good afternoon and happy late Father day to all y'all. My name is Jerry Rain Wolf Park. I live at 926 Virginia Street. And uh, you know how I grandma checking on things in the city of Perry. Uh, the new, the old truck would pick up the garbage. They left a big, a lot of paper in the street, but we don't have it no more because our tourists do some up here and looking at the streets. And the one that coming now, they're doing a good job, but the one we had before, they were just throwing paper be all up and down the street looking real, real bad. And so I'm glad we got a new, back in the old style of what, what we had. And uh, I was sitting on the porch one morning, you know, I get up real early, and I be seeing things, they call me nose. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I look, I said, what is those guys doing up there on Bradley Street? So I get out and I walk up there and look. And they gave Bradley Street a new facelift. That was real nice. And they went on down the street doing that too. So I called Mr. Gamble, I said, Mr. Gamble. I said, <laughs> I'm playing nosy, y'all. I'm gonna be frank with you. I see the thing, <laughs> where nobody else gonna see it. <laughs> he said, "Yes." I said, "They're doing the, the guys what did that work on Bradley Street? It was Newberry and two more. Uh, I changed it, but I, I, I didn't know their name. But I know Newberry 
was one of them, and they did a beautiful job. And the people that, look, the city did the housing, I thought approved it for the housing and thing. The people said they are really enjoying the air conditioning. I said, I know y'all live here, it's hot out here. <laughs> Once when I go in, I don't come back out no more. <laughs> so uh, Perry is looking good for us, and the people that live in Perry, they find great people to work with. I'm glad to see Mr. David Walker back, back at the city council. He was missing. Mr. David looked more like his mama, and Mr. Larry looked more like his daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to ask you a question, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Perry. What are they going to do with that land down there where the school was? I said for the Board of Education. Oh, with the Board of Education. Okay. You've been hearing different rumors. You know how people get the gossip and stuff get in the street. Okay, you know. That's, about, that's all. Well, I'm glad to be back home. One place back home. <laughs> they run me out of St. Peterborough. I can't imagine My little nephew said, I'll be glad my Auntie Darren go back to Georgia. <laughs> I said, I'm going back when it gets a little bit more warmer up there. But I'll be in St. Petersburg and Atlanta and Miami. That's my destination. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh -huh. Would anyone else like to address council? Thank you. Item 7 is a public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide any interested parties with an opportunity to express their views and concerns in accordance with OCGA section 36-67A-3C. 7A is a petition for rezoning application number R1805. The applicant, Terramore Development, LLC, requests the rezoning and annexation of property from Houston County RAG to City of Perry C2, General Commercial District. The property is located at 2100 Main Street. The tax map number is 000570-017000. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, this request, uh, as you mentioned, is for an annexation and rezoning to C2 General Commercial District. The property is about two acres, located on the northeast corner of uh, Perry Parkway and US 341 on Main Street. The applicant is requesting annexation in order to obtain uh, city water, which is available along US 341. Um, the, they are proposing to develop a 9,100 square foot Dollar General store. Um, we do have this is the property now, it's currently farmland, and this is the proposed or one of the original pro proposed site plans. I think they may have made some modifications since then. Um, in reviewing this uh, application subject to the criteria, staff determined that the application uh, does meet the criteria for annexation and that it is appropriate. The uh, Planning Commission uh, recommended approval as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Wood regarding this item? Hearing none. At this time, is there anyone present who wishes to speak for this petition for rezoning application 1805 as described? Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council. My name is Chris West. I'm at uh, 165 Big Star Drive in Thomasville, Georgia. I work with and represent Terramore Development, which is the applicant. Uh, we've been before you before in the last uh, year or two. Uh, good to see some familiar faces. Our company has developed a couple of Dollar Generals within the city in the past couple of years. Uh, we were commercial developers that worked throughout the southeast. Uh, we do a lot of Dollar Generals, we built I think around 250 of them in the past five years throughout the southeast with about four states. Uh, we, we take pride in, in the work that we do and we uh, live up to what we say we promise to, to deliver, and uh, I fully expect that we'll do the same with this project. So, um, we're asking you today to annex this property into the city 
Uh, it's, it's, uh, although it is ag, this is a it's a, it's a busy area. We've got uh, two four lane highways, one which is a state highway. Uh, we've got uh, emerging commercial development out here. I don't know what else you would do with the property other than maybe put a convenience store on it in the future in terms of uh, commercial. Uh, we can get into to any of the, the aspects or uh, questions that, that you folks have. Uh, there may be some folks here in the, uh, that from the community that, that came out to the, we had some folks that came out to the planning commission meeting and had some, uh, some good discussion on, on what the, the project uh, will entail and hopefully allay some initial concerns, but uh, we're happy to discuss any of those tonight as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else present who wishes to speak for this outcome as described? Present who wishes to speak against this petition for rezoning application 1805 as described. Please state your name and address. My name is uh, Jason Frazier. I live at 2081 U.S. Highway 341 South, basically diagonal from where uh, the proposed annexation and rezoning is being suggested. We have a lot of concerns, my wife and I. We have lived there since 2010, and we have seen a lot of traffic accidents here at the center sections, and our fear is that it will increase. We fear it will increase because it's a very busy intersection with uh, trucks going to the uh, processing plant for the chicken at Purdue, and we're also concerned because of Tostitos. Both, we have trailer trucks going in that direction. We're concerned because even we have Perry Parkway there, and no one, they don't have a very clear access. If someone's coming down south to go to this proposed store, they're going to have to go into Highway 341, and then make a left-hand turn against ongoing traffic. We feel that that's going to make it a much more dangerous intersection. Uh, this intersection experiences a lot of different traffic, from log trucks, to tractor trailer trucks, to food chicken trucks, all kinds. And I think it's very unique in, in Coston County and it's going to increase and make the area much more dangerous. And this is a huge fear for us. We're also afraid of how this is going to aesthetically hurt our community, our little area. There are no stores within over a mile, maybe two, in either direction. And now we're going to have one right here at this intersection. Uh, it's all farms, it's homes, and for a long period of time, that's how it's been zoned. And this is what we thought it would be when we bought it. We, like this is very good for this particular area of the county, as this area is very nearby, only a mile or two away. You can go to stores up at Publix or go into town or wherever, but this is supposed to be rebuilt an agricultural area, an area for homes, and this is what we would, would like to have it to be. Uh, so we're also concerned with our access to get our own mail with the, with the traffic increasing. We're just very concerned that what was our little neighborhood or rural area is going to become more and more organized and get more and more traffic and more and more accidents and not be the place that we really wanted to live. Thank you for your time and appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Would anyone, would anyone else present wish to speak against this application as described? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Jennifer Colson. We live at 2091 U.S. Highway 341 South. And that next, we're next door neighbors to Jay and Rebecca, so I won't go through everything he just said. It's the same, the safety concerns, the traffic, um, but just that we are opposed also and feel like at least some more research should be done into what types of traffic impact it'll have and how to address those. It's just not set up, we don't feel like, at present to accommodate a retail business. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Would anyone else like to speak against? Thank you. This public hearing is now closed. Item 8 is a review of minutes. Item 8, Council, for your consideration, you have been provided the minutes of the June 18, 2018 work session. June 19, 2018 pre-council meeting and the June 19, 2018 council meeting. 
And this time I will entertain a motion to approve these minutes as presented. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Are there any addition, changes, deletions, or corrections to these minutes? Or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Any abstentions? Mr. Jones? I abstain because I was absent from Please let the record indicate Mr. Jones abstained from because of his absence. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 9 is on business. 9A or ordinances for a second reading and adoption. 9A1, this is the second reading of an ordinance that will establish a restaurant for the district. Mr. Smith. <coughs> Mayor. Mayor and Council. As you stated, this is the second reading of an ordinance that will establish a restaurant district in downtown Perry. Essentially, what the ordinance will allow is open container seven days a week from 11 o'clock a.m. to 7, oh, sorry, to midnight. Uh, this is limited to one container per person. It must be in a plastic cup, no larger than 16 ounces, and private establishments can opt out should they choose to do so. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Any member of council have any questions regarding this item? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the ordinance that establishes the restaurant district as described. So moved. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. <coughs> motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 9A2 is the second reading of the ordinance that will amend the period code by deleting section 15 34 in its entirety and adding a new section 15 34 when tax due and payable and the effect of transacting business when the link. Council, you may remember in our pre council meeting, staff has requested that due to some more research that needs to be done regarding this item that we table this for the time being. So, therefore, at this time, I'm going to make a motion that we table this item as described. So, we a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. It is now tabled. Thank you. Item 10 is any other old business? Item 10A, is any other business from the mayor? I have none. 10B, is any other business from council members? Ms. Bynum Grace? No. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Walker? No. Mr. Hunt? No. Mr. Jackson? No, sir. King? No. Thank you. Item 10C, is any other business from the city manager, Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Thank you. Item 10D, is any other business from the assistant city manager, Mr. Smith? No, sir. Thank you. And 10E, is any other business from the city attorney, Mr. Walker? No, sir. Item 11 is new business. 11A are matters that have been referred from the July 2nd, 2018 work session and also the July 3rd, 2018 pre council meeting. We have a couple of items that came from last night's work session. Item 11A1 is a resolution imposing a moratorium on certain multifamily uses. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Council, as you remember, we had talked about this in your work session yesterday. Uh, this administration is recommending to council that you adopt a moratorium on the construction and rezoning of multifamily units that have more than four units per parcel. Uh, the reason for this is that with the growing market for apartments, we want to make sure that uh, we have the best possible regulations to address transportation issues, public welfare issues, uh, infrastructure, etc. And so therefore, we recommend to you to adopt this resolution. This will be for 120 days. We have to talk about 90, but 120 days to allow time for staff to present to the Planning Commission and come back. Mr. Gilmore, are there any current pending applications for apartments of these, this type that we have on record now? No, sir. Thank you. Any questions? Further questions for Mr. Gilmore from Council? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we adopt a resolution imposing a moratorium on certain multifamily uses as described. So, so moved. Motion and a second. Mr. King? Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. <coughs> motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Now, all, all, all those opposed, raise your hand. Please let the record indicate Council McCunn uh, opposes. We talked about it last night. We said 90 days, and now we changed to 120 days. If somebody wants to come put a nice unit here, we ought to get it. Our business takes care of it before we do it. Thank you, sir. Motion carries. I apologize. It's not me, though. I'm 11A2 is a resolution to rescind the moratorium for personal care facilities. Mr. Gilman. 
Thank you, Mayor. As we talked about in your work session yesterday, you had imposed a moratorium on personal care facilities to allow, again, a review and determine the, the best land uses and areas for them to go. Uh, that has been resolved by the action that you took at your last meeting, so the administration recommends that you rescind the moratorium. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Any questions from council regarding this item? Hearing none, at this time I want to entertain a motion we adopt the resolution to rescind the moratorium for personal care facilities as described. So moved. So a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. Thank you. Motion carries. Item 11B, your ordinance is for a first reading and introduction. 11B1 is the first reading of an ordinance for the rezoning of property from Houston County RAG to City of Perry C2 general commercial business. The property is located at 2100 Main Street. Tax map number is 000570-017-000. Anything further, Mr. Wood, on this item? Yes, sir. Thank you, Council. This is the first reading and introduction. Therefore, no action is required at this time by Council. Item 11B2 is the first reading of an ordinance for the annexation of property from Houston County RAG to the City of Perry C2 general commercial district. The property is located at 2100 Main Street, tax map number 000570017000. Again, this is the first reading in production, therefore no action is required by council at this time. Item 11B3 is the first reading of an ordinance that will amend the Perry Code by deleting section 152204 in its entirety and adding a new section 152204 regarding indemnity. Mr. Wood. Yes, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This is a modification to the ordinance regarding the regulation of food trucks, and this essentially um, modifies the way that uh, we require the applicant to identify the city um, on any actions. Rather than having to sign a particular uh, or specific document, they uh, agree to identify the city. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Is there any questions from Council? Thank you, sir. Council, because this is the first reading and introduction, no action is required at this time. Item 11B4 is the first reading of an ordinance amending the period code relative to certain license fees. Mr. Gilman. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mayor and Council, in your packet is a first reading of an ordinance to amend the code, which removes from certain sections a specified fee amount changes that to reference to the fee schedule. Um, periodically we'll find portions of the code that historically stated what the fee is and this will just be a more effective way. Mr. Gilmore, have we not done this on multiple occasions when we do find these items in the code? Yes, sir. Several times. Uh, any other questions Mr. Gilmore from the council? Thank you. This is the first reading that we're going to is required by council. Item 11C, the resolutions for consideration and adoption. 11C1 is a resolution appointing the firm Walker Holder for the Moore LLP as the prosecuting attorney from the municipal court of the city of Perry, Mr. Gilman. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, this resolution is presented to you just to clarify what the recent uh, separation from Mr. Matt Hulbert from the firm that the solicited, solicitor for our municipal court would be the firm rather than. Mr. Walker, do you have anything to add? No, sir. Sure. Thank you. Questions from Council? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we adopt the resolution appointing the firm Walker Holbert Gray and Moore LLP as prosecuting attorneys to the municipal court of the city of Peoria as described. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Walker. Thank you. Item 12 for Council Member items. Mr. Adam Grace. Jones, Mr. Walker, no, Mr. Hunt, no, Mr. Jackson, no, sir. Mr. Kent, no, sir. Thank you. Mr. Gilmore, no, sir. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir, Mayor. I do have one item. Friday, July 13th is our next food truck Friday event. We'll have 15 food trucks this time, um, a number of other types of vendors. It starts at 6 o'clock that evening and will end at 10 o'clock p.m. And we'll have live music, that type of stuff. Should be an excellent event. Thank you all. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. 
Is it the final grace? It's not going to rain, is it? It's in the forecast. In the forecast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the final grace is our, our, our weather lady when it comes to the walk of mayor and council. So I always have to check on the weather. That's the man. That's going to be a good time. Mr. Walker, do you have anything for us? Uh, I regret that uh, Mike Gray was uh, in attendance. He's also one of my law partners. I hope I found him. And I would like to say that uh, the ones I introduced to Josh Waters and Brooke Gibby and John Hubbard and Kelly Moore, who's not here, also um, are doing work for the uh, city of Perry. And it's not a, uh, I'm not doing it all, it's a, it's a firm uh, thing, and we appreciate the business. Thank you, sir. Y'all doing a good job. We appreciate it. Thank you. Item 13, the Department of Health and Staff items. We'll start with the Office of the City Clerk this morning. Thank you. From the Department of Finance and Administration, Ms. King. Thank you. Community Development, Mr. Wood. Mr. Mayor, Mayor and Council, I do uh, remember one thing that I meant to mention last night. Uh, Y'all got an email yesterday, but the, through the first half of this year, we have issued 180 new single-family permits, so that's on track to potentially exceed last year's record-breaking uh, number of permits. Uh, also, uh, we have two subdivisions that are uh, ready for permitting, so that uh, single family number is going to just keep growing. Wonderful. That's good news. Thank you. Mr. Smith, you've already reported as Assistant City Manager, and I'm assuming you're still wearing a dual role for economic development. Is there anything from that area? No, sir. Thank you. From Leisure Services Department, Mr. Dye. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Mayor, Councilor, and our audience and viewers, um, just want to remind everybody of some dates. Uh, school starts August 1st, so we've got less than a month. Soccer registration for fall starts on July 9th. It will end on July 13th. Our disc golf clinics on Friday have been extended to July 20th. That's a free event. Adults, children, everybody's welcome. Uh, football registration starts July 16th. It will end on July 20th. And we have a football camp that's Saturday, July 21st at the high school. It will not be at Creekwood Park. Uh, registration starts at 8 a.m. The kids will be in drills at 8.30 and it should wrap up around noon. Um, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, the police department, Chief Lynn. Nothing to sir. Thank you. Thank you. Fire and Emergency Services, Chief Parker. Nothing to sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Item 14 of general public items. Is there any member of the general public who wishes to address council on any item at this time? meet again and that will be on I get the right key on the 16th of July which is a Monday at 5 p.m. we'll have a work session in this room and then on the 17th we will have a pre-council meeting upstairs at 5 p.m. and the council meeting at 6 in this room. I'd like to remind the public that all of our meetings are open to the public and how the general public is more than welcome to attend. Please be careful. Tomorrow is Independence Day. Um, there are a lot of people who are off all week. Um, I'm not retired, so I'm not. I, I do get tomorrow off, though, so that is, a, that is a good thing. But please be careful. Um, there are a lot of people on the roads, and there is a lot of people trying to wrestle with the new law that went into effect about cell phones and driving. I happen to carry three, which is idiotic, to be honest with you. Um, but I can't put all three on the vent loaders because they don't put in the air conditioning. So I'm not sure what I'm, I guess I'm about to play the final thing to talk. But I don't talk and text and drive, and I'm trying to obey the law. But please be careful. If you don't understand what, what the law is, ask Chief Lynn or someone because it is very important. I am wholeheartedly endorsing the law. It is good. Distracted driving kills. Mm -hmm. It does. And that cell phone usage is not the only distraction that you can have. So please, please be careful. Be careful. 
and I have to say it one more time, if you're driving on a three-lane road, slower traffic, you see it right. <laughs> That's all the bear items I have. Thank you for your interest and participation. At this time, I want to a motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of real estate and personnel. We'll move we'll take a motion and a second in discussion. Here, none all the favor, raise your hand. Thank you all very much.